Hey, welcome to the next video. In the uh, continuing of our design of our application, we have come to the point where we are able to enter in new users and then those users are able to create new heroes from this data entry form at the bottom of our screen. In the last video we created heroes and they showed up in the database so we can see that we have created Harry and Ron and then uh, we can see them also as a copy down here. In this video we're going to take the data and show it on the screen because right now it's just uh, no response. The, the feedback to the user is just completely dead. There's nothing going on as far as the user can tell. So in between these two forms we're going to make a list of everybody that's in the database. So I'm here on the uh, database um, documentation again. So for the Firebase page with the uh, docs it's called. I'm in the uh, section for reading and writing data. We've already done the first part, which is writing. So we collected a database reference. We used the write user data function as an example, and we set items in our, t in our tree. Okay, so now we're down here in the section for listening for value events. The nice thing about uh, Firebase is that it automatically triggers a function whenever the values of a certain branch of the tree is changed. They have some example code here. They had an application about stars on posts, you know, like ratings. And so their tree branch was called posts and star count. Ours is going to be heroes and users or something like that. But here is the key uh, action we're looking at. So it's an on function. So on the change of any value, that's what this means. So uh, I'm going to copy this for an example, but it's going to change drastically. Let's copy that. I'm going to go into my code and down here on the near the bottom where we had an auth state change, we're going to create a similar idea. So instead of star count reference, we're going to call it hero reference. And that's going to be equal to firebase.database and the reference is where we're headed and then we're going to look for the child called um, heroes. That's the reference that we're interested in. So on hero reference dot on value that means anytime the the value changes we are going to call a function and in that function it's going to return what's called a snapshot. Okay, so we're going to erase the original code example and use the one that's here. So let's, I don't understand what's coming back from the snapshot, so let's do a, a console log and just see what happens. So I'm going to print snapshot to the screen or to the console log and save it. Okay, so now let's go back into our code and let's refresh the page. So you can see that there, there is something that is returned in the uh, console and it is an object with a lot of data in here. And so this isn't exactly what we want. We want to have something called the child of this snapshot. So uh, let's, let's do another couple of commands up here. So I'm going to do, the, um, do some operations on this variable called snapshot. I'm going to get a for each. So for each of those I'm going to run a function and it is called a child snapshot that is going to come out of here. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say whatever the item of this thing was called and it is the child snapshot dot val and then the key is next is going to be item dot key is the child snapshot dot key. So those two together we can print out to our console. So console dot log And let's erase this one. Now we might get some more sensible feedback if we use that there. So let's refresh the page. And this time we're getting more like what we expect. You see here's two objects. This one's called deity false. It looks like Harry Potter and this one shows up as Ron. So the item is actually the object of each user and then the key is the uh, person's uh, ID. And so that that's, works a little bit better now. So with that testing in mind, we can delete these last three lines and we know that each item, or we could call this each person, is going to be a uh, item in our one of our heroes. Okay, so now how, how do we put this on the screen? That's our eventual goal. So whenever a, a value is changed in our database, it displays it on the screen. 
Okay, so I'm looking for a place to display the heroes on the screen. I've got the add hero form at the end and there's the login form. So right in between those, let's create some space and I'm going to put in an area called uh, show heroes here. And so in this we need a div and with an ID and I'm going to call it show heroes. And inside there we're going to fill it up with a bunch of code that comes from our database. But for now let's use a placeholder. I'm going to say h1. So let's let's test it and see if that actually comes out looking good. So sure enough there is a section called show heroes here. I'm going to use the class of container again and see if that helps with our indenting. So sure enough it indents to be the same margins on each side. Let's start adding some some data in here now instead of a placeholder. So back down we go into our value sensor or our database sensor. This one here where it says on the change we're gonna take each person and display it on the screen. So the first thing we have to do is uh, let's clear out whatever's inside of our show hero section. So that would be show heroes. And I'm going to use a jQuery command called empty, which will delete that text, whatever it is inside it. And then we're going to refill it. So now I'm going to create a variable and make a long string of HTML and then put it into that division or that div section. So a good name for this thing would be a hero HTML item. And we'll start off by giving it a nice title. So let's say h3 and let's call it uh, here are all of the heroes I have in my database. Okay, so the headline will be at the top of the list. For each person that we create, we want to make a short unordered list and show all the properties in it. So this is what we're going for eventually. We're gonna say these are all the heroes in our collection. We're gonna make an unordered list and show each item or each property and eventually put some buttons in to delete and edit. So hero HTML items are gonna to have to have, uh, they're gonna have, have, to have, to have a list item and then a closed list item. What are we gonna put inside each of those? Well, the first thing we want to put in is probably the name. So let's put in the word name. And then a, we're going to have a place, uh, we're gonna put a span and then a closed span so we can get a hold of this later. But the, um, the name, where did we get the name from? Well, that is a variable, so I have to put in a plus sign and split up these quotes. What's the variable? It is the uh, it's the object we're talking about here. Person, person dot, and then what do I have for choices? Do I have a name? I do. Person dot name, and so that will be the first list item. Now we're going to use the same process. So I'm going to copy and paste the rest of these and you can type it in as I do maybe not quite as fast okay the last thing I have to do is tell the uh, string HTML list item to go onto the page so we are going to target the um, area called show heroes and we're going to set its HTML properties to our HTML, HTML item and that should show it up on the page. Okay, I'm going to refresh our page and it says here, these are all the heroes I have in my database and sure enough, it shows both of them. Now, watch how fast our database responds. So if I create a new guy, let's call him Hagrid and uh, let's see, he's kind of a half lane thing or whatever he is. Let's create a new item, and sure enough, Hagrid shows up immediately. So this code here on the hero reference, whenever a value changes, it recreates this section. It's like instantaneous. First of all, it empties out an area, recreates a string for it, and then replaces the contents with our uh, HTML. So you might have to double check your typing to get all this detail right, but that should give you a automatic live update on your screen.